you've probably heard that some of the healthiest foods you can eat are fruits and vegetables, and there's a lot of evidence behind that. Uh, there's many natural compounds found in fruits and vegetables that aren't even available in supplement form. Uh, and another advantage of fruits and vegetables, which I've discussed in previous videos, is the high fiber content. We now know that fiber has a close relationship with the health of what they call the intestinal microbiome, which is the population of bacteria and other organisms that reside in the colon that have a very, very strong effect on the human immune system. Uh, also, the absorption of nutrients, prevention of obesity, and other reasons. Uh, in this particular video, however, I want to talk about what I consider the healthiest uh, of all fruits and vegetables, uh, specifically vegetables. These are called cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous is, term, is a term meaning uh, like a cross because the leaves of cruciferous vegetables kind of resemble a cross. So they call them cruciferous vegetables. These include things such as Brussels sprouts, cabbage, turnips, uh, kale, uh, uh, what did, did I say? Bro uh, 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 broccoli, of course, and uh, broccoli sprouts. Uh, there's there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, but the thing that really makes them special is that they contain compounds that are almost impossible to get in supplement form, but have tremendous effects on health. Uh, now, uh, chief among these compounds is uh, a substance called sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is found in cruciferous vegetables. Uh, so forafane uh, is almost impossible to get in supplements, and I'll tell you why later, but uh, um, I should also explain that you don't, this is a little confusing, these vegetables don't actually contain sulforaphane, but they contain a precursor called glucorophanin. Now, glucorophanin is a precursor for sulforaphane. Now, when you uh, either cut uh, cruciferous vegetables, like cut it with a knife, or you chew it, you release a, a, a chemical, an enzyme called myrosinase. Myrosinase converts glucorophanin into active sulforaphane. Uh, and an important point is without the presence of myrosinase, all you have is glucophanin, uh, glucorophanin, which is inactive. It really doesn't do anything. It's just a precursor. Sulforaphane is the active ingredient. And again, that requires myrosinase. This is why these broccoli supplements and these vegetable powders that contain broccoli extract, they're basically worthless from a health point of view because they don't contain myrosinase, which is processed out in the production of these extracts. So all you're left is with is with this, again, you know, glucorophanin, which doesn't, again, doesn't do anything. You have to have myrosinase. Uh, since this information became available, a couple of supplement companies have now produced products that contain, uh, let's say, broccoli extracts with added myrosinase. Theoretically, this should uh, produce active sulforaphane. The problem with that is that sulforaphane is very, very unstable. As soon as it's produced, it starts to break down. If you put it in a capsule form, by the time you get it, there's no sulforaphane left. So the only, what this all adds up to is the only true way to obtain, to obtain sulforaphane and similar health benefiting chemicals is to eat the actual food, in this case, cruciferous vegetables. Uh, an important, uh, okay, so again, uh, let's see, glucorophanin is known as an isothiocyanate. That's the uh, class of compounds that it belongs in. And there's several that exist in crucif cruciferous vegetables. One of them, not glucor glucorophanin, converts di didolomethene or DIM, converts into DIM, I should say. DIM, in turn, is an active component of another substance found in vegetables called indole-3-carbonyl. Indole-3-carbonyl uh, is converted into uh, into basically a DIM. DIM is a product of indole 3 carbonyl Now, DIM is is uh, present is uh, is uh, available, I should say, as a standalone supplement, and it's touted to decrease estrogen production. Uh, and in, and uh, science studies show that it actually does do that. Among other effects of DIM is that it inhibits aromatase which is the enzyme that converts androgens, such as testosterone and others, into estrogen. 
DIM also has the ability to uh, work on uh, blocking estrogen at both the estrogen A and B receptors. And it also, uh, it also can, uh, uh, what was I going to say? It also converts these uh, kind of toxic forms of estrogen called, uh, called, uh, called uh, 16 hydroxyestrogens into 2 hydroxyestrogens. The significance of that is that while the 16 hydroxyestrogens are known carcinogens involved in uh, prostate and breast cancer, the 2 hydroxyestrogens uh, are basically benign and impart the health benefits of estrogen. Uh, now you might say, okay, DAM sounds pretty good. Let me uh, let me either uh, eat this in uh, cruciferous vegetables, or better yet, let me take a supplement of uh, DAM. Uh, however, you know, it turns out that uh, it does inhibit breast and prostate cancer, into, uh, but this occurs when smaller doses of DAM are consumed. Larger doses of DAM paradoxically boost aromatase activity and increase estrogen levels. A safe and effective dose of DAM would be about 100 milligrams. The same enzyme, myrosinase, that converts glucorophanin into sulfur sulforaphane converts glucoprasicin into indole-3-carbinol, which is then converted into DIM. So again, in my opinion, you're better off to uh, get your DIM from these cruciferous vegetables rather than a supplement form. Although if you do take a supplement, don't take more than 100 milligrams because, again, taking more is like taking estrogen. So, uh, again, I stick with the, the vegetables. Cooking vegetables destroys myrosinase and thus reduces both sulforaphane and DIM. Microwaving the vegetables for 30 seconds preserves these compounds, as does steaming them for one to three minutes. Light stir-frying, again, very briefly, also will preserve the myrosinase and thus the beneficial compounds such as uh, sulforaphane. However, if you cook vegetables uh, like broccoli, which would destroy the myrosinase and would prevent the production of sulforaphane, you can actually restore the, uh, the sulforaphane by adding mustard seed powder to the cooked vegetables. Mustard seed powder contains a form of myrosinase, which is far more resistant to heat than the natural myrosinase found in the vegetables. So you could, if you prefer to have cooked vegetables, you could add something like mustard seed powder, which again has natural heat resistant myrosinase and you can get the same benefits by eating cooked vegetables as you do raw vegetables. Regarding sulforaphane, broccoli sprouts contain far more of the precursor gluc glucorophanin does, than does whole broccoli. Unfortunately, during the conversion of glucorophanin into sulforaphane, a chemical is produced called ESP and it doesn't stand for extrasensory perception by the way. <laughs> that it converts glucorophanin into an in inactive form of sulforaphane, sulforaphane that has no health benefits. Uh, this is a, this is a rare occurrence. It doesn't happen very often. It's not something to be concerned about, but uh, it could happen. Uh, maybe some people are more genetically prone to that. I don't know. In most cases, uh, people are able to convert the uh, glucor the uh, glucorophanin into sulforaphanin as long as the myrosinase is present. Uh, your intestinal bacteria also produce myrosinase in very small amounts. So, you know, if the uh, glucorophanin gets to the, let's say, colon, uh, where the, the intestinal bacteria are, they will be able to partially convert some of it into sulforaphane also. That's another sort, but it doesn't convert a lot of it. It's just a minor source. You should also know that fresh broccoli has far more potential to produce sulforaphane than does frozen broccoli. Once formed, sulforaphane is 74% absorbable or bioavailable orally, so it's easily absorbed, mostly in the jejunum or the, of the small intestine. Among other effects, sulforaphane can inhibit aromatase. Again, that's the enzyme that converts estrogen. I'm sorry, androgens into estrogen. So forafine is also a potent antioxidant through its actions in stimulating the master antioxidant switch in the body called NRF2. That, that and also the production of hydrogen sulfide and also the fact that uh, the sulforaphane activates what they call phase 2 enzymes in the liver which detoxify 
all kinds of carcinogens that you would either inhale or ingest in food. This is what makes sulforaphane so protective against various types of cancer and other diseases. Uh, there, uh, you, you know, the funny thing about sulforaphane, it sounds very beneficial, but it actually works uh, in doing these things. A lot of people don't realize because it's basically a toxic substance and the body wants to get rid of it as fast as it can because if it would build up in the body, it can actually cause DNA damage. So to get rid of the uh, sulforaphane that you ingest or that's produced in the body, uh, you know, after myrosinase exposure, uh, the body activates a number of protective cell enzymes uh, like NRF2 protein and several others, glutathione. And in doing so, uh, sulforaphane indirectly offers protection because of the mere fact that it is toxic and the body's trying to get rid of it as fast as possible. That's kind of an irony about sulforaphane. Because if you go on the web, you'll read dozens and dozens of articles listing all the health benefits, but very few of them point out the fact that sulforaphane is actually a toxin. You know, it doesn't hurt you though, because it, it, like I say, it's very ephemeral. It only lasts for a very short time. It does its thing and it's gone, almost like nitric oxide. Uh, and, and really, and interesting enough, there's some preliminary evidence. It's very preliminary that sulforaphane can even reduce the addiction to cocaine. I'm not sure of the mechanisms, but it's Kind of in it, it, it's in its infancy. This particular uh, research. Some evidence also shows that sulforaphane can help reduce body fat levels. In fact, in a 2017 mouse study showed that when the rodents were provided with sulforaphane while eating a high fat diet, a high fat diet always makes rodents like mice and rats fat. Doesn't necessarily do to humans, but it does it in rodents. I should point out. Anyway, when the rats were provided with sulforaphane while on a high fat diet. They showed 15% less fat gains compared to mice not provided with sulforaphane. The sulforaphane treated rats all showed, showed a 15% reduction in visceral fat. Visceral fat is a type of deep lying abdominal fat. You can't see it, it, it lines the internal organs. It's considered the most dangerous of all types of body fat because it's constantly releasing fatty acids which travel in the, to the liver. And it, you know, this fat builds up in the liver, causes fatty liver which in turn is associated with diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. The sulforaphane reduced visceral fat in the mice and rats by 15%. It also lowered blood glucose levels. Other studies show that uh, sulforaphane also does that in humans, which means it can also help prevent type 2 diabetes. And also, and also uh, sulforaphane also reduces fat in the liver, which would mean it's useful in preventing uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver, which is in epidemic proportions right now, affecting 80 to 100 million Americans. Untreated fatty liver progresses to first cirrhosis or scar tissue formation of the liver, followed by either total liver, fa total liver failure requiring a transplant or liver cancer, both of which can actually kill you, of course. So forafane also helps to reduce the production of brown adipose tissue, I'm going to have an article in my Applied Metabolics newsletter very soon uh, on all the latest information about brown adipose tissue, also known as BAT. This is a thermogenic tissue that uh, concentrates what they call uncoupling proteins, which convert calories into heat. It's called a feudal energy cycle. And uh, brown fat actually goes a pretty long way in helping to reduce uh, the production of fat in the body. Uh, there's much more to it. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but suffice to say that sulforaphane seems to promote the uh, conversion of white adipose tissue or normal fat cells into BAT or brown adipose tissue. In muscle, sulforaphane also blunts the release of myostatin, which I've discussed in previous videos. Myostatin, of course, is a protein found in muscle which inhibits muscle gains. Sulforaphane is a natural inhibitor of myostatin. In the prostate gland, sulforaphane reduces, uh, reduces hydrogen sulfide, which is also produced by garlic. Uh, hydrogen sulfide is known to repress prostate cancer cell growth. It also decreases, uh, sulforaphane also decreases androgen signaling to, prost to the prostate, again offering preventive effects against prostate cancer onset. In fact, there's a synthetic analog of sulforaphane called DL sulforaphane that is currently being investigated for its usage against prostate cancers, and it appears to be promising. You know, this is a, you know, they can't, uh, drug companies can't patent sulforaphane, 
Uh, it'd be very hard to bruise anyway because it's, like I say, it's very unstable. If you put it in a pill form or a liquid, it's gone. It doesn't, gone in a, who knows, a couple of minutes, it's gone, breaks down. But, you know, they could produce a synthetic form, such as this DL sulforaphane, which, and possibly make it more stable uh, and sell it as a drug that could prevent prostate cancer, probably sell it for, and make literally billions on it. Uh, you know, but you, of course, it's a lot less expensive to just consume cruciferous vegetables. Uh, uh, Sulforaphane also appears to be an effective kidney protective compound during periods of, of exposure to toxins or physical stressors to the kidney, such as not drinking enough water, taking diuretics. But the protection of self offered by sulforaphane in the kidneys only exists while you're eating. Uh, these vegetables, like cruciferous vegetables, that provide sulforaphane. In other words, if you want the protection on the, uh, for kidneys induced by sulforaphane, you have to actually be eating the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, cruciferous vegetables that supply it while you're exposed to any possible renal or kidney stressors. Just three to five servings of cruciferous vegetables a week are enough to reduce cancer risk by 30 to 40 percent. Again, this has a lot to do with the detoxification systems in the liver that are activated by sulforaphane, which break down carcinogens and, and cause them to be excreted harmlessly through the kidneys and also through the antioxidant action of sulforaphane, which is induced by sulforaphane promoting the activity of NRF2, which activates all these protective antioxidant, uh, antioxidant enzymes in the body, such as glutathione, SOD catalase, and others. Uh, Sulforaphane so can also reduce the development of atherosclerotic, uh, atherosclerotic plaques, and it can also reduce blood clot formation. In that sense, it also offers cardiovascular protection. A Japanese study found that broccoli sprouts, when ingested daily for two months, can protect against ulcers, stomach bugs, and possibly stomach cancer. It's specifically effective against the helio hel Helicobacter pylori bacterium, which is the known cause of stomach ulcers and related to the uh, onset of gastric or stomach cancer. So forafane proved to be a powerful antibiotic, reducing bacterial levels by 40%. Now, how much uh, sulforaphane should you ingest? Well, the, uh, they only really, you'd have to extrapolate the doses that have been shown to be beneficial in animals. There really is no set dose for humans. But if we extrapolate the amounts shown to be health protective in animals, in the animal studies, uh, that was, this would translate into ingesting 9 to 45 milligrams a day of sulforaphane for a 200-pound person or 11 to 57 milligrams for a man weighing 250 uh, pounds. Uh, now, uh, if you, if you want to know about how, much to, how to get that in foods, for example, if you eat Brussels, uh, broccoli sprouts, which contain a lot of sulforaphane, probably the richest natural source, this would equal about 20 to 30 grams uh, of intake of, bro of uh, broccoli sprouts will give you that amount of, uh, would give you the, let's say, beneficial amounts of sulforaphane. And it also has the built-in myrosinase. As soon as you chew it or cut it, boom, you have sulforaphane, you eat it, there it is. I should point out one other thing as far as, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that sulforaphane itself is a kind of toxin that the body wants to get rid of, but the uh, endo, uh, the isothiocyanates of which sulforaphane is a, uh, is, is a part of, I should say, uh, excessive amounts of these cruciferous vegetables because of the contents of isocyanothias, because of the content of that stuff, it can block iodine uptake. It can block iodine uptake into the thyroid gland and lower thyroid output. So theoretically, if you consumed, uh, if you went overboard, and let's say started to consume pounds and pounds of these cruciferous vegetables, you know, like two pounds of broccoli and God knows how many Brussels sprouts and all that, uh, you probably, you know, would cause a uh, uh, the, the release of these uh, chemicals, which block the uptake of iodine into the thyroid gland. And uh, you probably get a big goiter, this kind of big lump, in the, uh, which is indicative of a low thyroid output because the gland, in, in try, trying to tra uh, trap more iodine, the gland actually enlarges and you get this big lump in your throat called a goiter. Again, that's very, very unlikely. It's not something to even think about. Uh, if it happens at all, I would say it's, uh, 
If it happens at all, I would say it's more likely to happen in vegans uh, who get a little over enthusiastic and, and start to eat pounds and pounds a day of all these cruciferous vegetables. I, and uh, to my knowledge, uh, I haven't seen any medical studies indicating that vegans are prone to hypothyroidism or low thyroid. So it's not even something for them to worry about. And it's an easily solved problem. All you got to do is take some supplemental iodine, you know, an iodine. I actually take an iodine supplement myself. I take a, a thousand milligram capsule of iodine in the morning because uh, I don't eat salt. I don't add salt to my foods. I don't eat fish, which is a good source of natural iodine. And salt contains, of course, iodized salt contains iodine. So just for safety purposes, I once a day I, I uh, consume this thousand microgram dose of i of um, iod uh, iodine derived from a type of seaweed in the morning. I just take it once a day. My thyroid output is normal, and I, and full disclosure, after saying all these beneficial things about cruciferous vegetables, I will admit to you right now, I don't I don't like cruciferous vegetables. Uh, I can't stand the taste of them. I've tried to eat them all, as many, many times over the years after, you know, writing about them and knowing all these health benefits. I find them disgusting, but I found a way to consume them. For the last, let's say, two, three years, I bought one of those blenders that kind of chops up vegetables, you know, bullet blenders, whatever they're called, Nutra Bullet. I have one of those. And I, what I do is I put in some water, small amount of water, and I add uh, my, my particular drink, I add stuff called chard. Uh, it has uh, baby spinach leaves. It has uh, kale. And then I add uh, raw broccoli uh, florets. Uh, and uh, I, I believe I add enough vegetables uh, to this uh, drink. It equals probably about four or five servings right there of vegetables. And I just chop it all up and drink it down. I use a chaser. Uh, I use a, uh, a, uh, uns uh, a artificially sweetened uh, drink, uh, flavored drink. Otherwise, this stuff tastes like absolute garbage. But I drink it down fast. Each gulp of the vegetable juice, I follow it with a you know flavored water chaser. I'm able to get it down. Uh, and because uh, you know this allows me to have all the benefits of vegetables that actually without actually having to eat them, I drink them, and you know all the fibers included because it's not a juicer. So I get all the benefits of these vegetables, and after you know, after avoiding these vegetables most of my life, I'm now eating them. Uh, you know, I can't tell you whether they're giving it me any uh, benefits, but again, based on the existing research, I cannot not eat these vegetables. So this is a tip for you, those of you like me, who just can't stomach these vegetables in any form, no matter how they're prepared. Just you know, buy one of these vegetable blenders, chop them up, add some water, drink it down like I do. And you'll, you know, you'll get the benefits. And that's about it for this particular video. If you want the best information on nutrition, very in-depth, nutrition, exercise science, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that work, uh, what else, uh, ergogenic aids, women's health, Subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. 40 to 50 pages every month. In fact, I just completed an article. It'll probably be out before you see this video in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. It's actually the most in-depth article ever written, ever, anywhere, on fat burner supplements. How they work. Fat burner supplement ingredients, I should say. How they work. Possible dangers of these ingredients. The article itself is the size of an ebook. It's something like 45 pages. So it's actually an ebook, <laughs> even though it's a newsletter. That, and I have another article on that same uh, issue. Uh, this is just a one example of what you find in my Applied Metabolic Center. You won't find this information anywhere. I guarantee you won't find it on any website. You won't find it on any other digital publication because nobody could match my 57 years of constant study and actual experience in this stuff. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition, medicine, and general health. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics site where you're welcome to send me brief questions, which I'll be happy to answer for subscribers only. I don't answer unsolicited questions. Uh, you're welcome to leave comments under this video. 
Uh, there's very little likelihood that I, I will answer every question submitted. I just don't have the time. And also, I, the little limited time I do have, I'd rather give to uh, rather give that to my subscribers who support my work. So that's about it. Take care. If you want to have the best friend you ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They are the best. Take care.